Hello, and uh, welcome back to my vlog. Um, yesterday was the first day that I missed doing a vlog. Uh, so I'm sorry about that. Um, I'll tell you why. When I first started chemo, I was given, along with every you know, whole pile of stuff, um, a kind of matrix that, uh, that, that indicated some possible side effects of chemo, and um, there were a number of, of uh, possible side effects that, uh, that weren't necessarily good things. And if any of these things turned up, I had to give a, an emergency uh, telephone number a call. Well, um, throughout Monday, I had a kind of uh, griping in my stomach. And uh, I'm sure I told you about that last time. And felt generally uncomfortable. And... Uh, um went to bed on on uh, Monday evening and uh couldn't get to sleep I slept from about uh, uh two o'clock until five o'clock and um five o'clock I woke up feeling absolutely dreadful and uh it was clear that I had one of these things that I had to give the uh, the helpline a ring so I, I, I phoned them up about um, half past six in the morning. It's a 24-hour helpline. Uh, the person who answered it uh, kind of discussed what the problem was and uh, suggested that I went to see my GP. So I, I uh, it would have been nine o'clock by the time the GP was open and, uh, and uh, well, eight o'clock at least. And it would have been likely to have been about half past 11 by the time I got to the appointment with the GP. So when it got to nine o'clock, I gave the helpline a ring again. And uh, uh, at nine o'clock, between, between nine and five, the helpline is uh, staffed by uh, by uh, on-college experts, basically. Uh, so I discussed the problem with with uh, the lady on the phone, and she said, "Oh yes, um, come down to uh, uh, A and E, and I'm sure when you get here, you'll be referred up to oncology, and uh, and I'll look out for you coming up." So that's great. Uh, a friend of mine uh, took me down to uh, A and E, and uh, we uh, I presented myself. Um, and showed this card that I have to show, you know, that says I'm at a chemo um, uh, patient. And um, I was very quickly triaged, uh, great triage. The uh, the two girls that uh, that triaged me uh, kind of understood that uh, as a chemo patient with a perhaps reduced immune system, um, I would need to be as isolated as possible in terms of a of a, an accident and emergency uh, waiting room so anyway they triaged me and took some blood samples and uh, um, they said, suggested that they'd find somewhere for for me and my friend to uh, to sit waiting for the doctor which will be away from from any possible risk of, of infection as far as possible However, nowhere could be found, and uh, I was invited to sit back in the waiting room, which is fine. It was perhaps around another hour and a half before the doctor uh, uh, called us in to uh, to review uh, my case. Um, the doctor seemed very disinterested in the fact that I was on uh, chemotherapy, and uh, having reviewed my previous medical records, without really exam examining me, apart from questioning me, um, he decided that I needed to uh, uh, to be referred for a surgical admission. And I would be admitted as soon as a surgical bed became free. So, I was uh, then uh, sent to wait uh, outside a room which was described as the uh, flu testing station, uh, which was great in terms of uh, worries about infection. And uh, after about an hour or so of waiting there, uh, my friend uh, went to see the uh, the medical uh, help 
desk in A and E, uh, and they they suggested that perhaps waiting outside the uh, the flu testing station wasn't a good idea for a, a chemo sufferer, and they asked me if I wanted to go and sit back out in the waiting room. Which I said, yes, that's fine. Uh, of course, when I got out into the waiting room, the waiting room was absolutely packed. So not necessarily isol any more isolated from infection risk than, than where I had been, however. So we waited there, uh, waiting for this uh, referral to a uh, surgical admission. I hadn't been told at all why they decided that uh, surgical admission was the place where it needed to be. Because, I, as I mentioned, I really wanted just a chat with oncology uh, to see whether there was anything that I needed to be concerned about with, with this, this marker that had shown up for me that day. So we waited and waited and waited at this, uh, uh, in the waiting room. And um, my friend had to go to work uh, at, at three o'clock. She had to leave at three o'clock. So uh, that was fine. I was quite happy to stay there on my own. I, I expected that she would be going at three o'clock, so that's fine. But at half past two, I thought, oh, well, let's just see if, if there's anything moved on here. Uh, so I uh, requested another chat with the doctor that uh, had seen me originally. He came to see me fairly quickly and um, and uh, suggested that uh, I was still better to wait for this uh, surgical bed to be to come free, and uh, then I'd uh, I'd get uh, uh, looked at by a surgical consultant. Still no reason, so no idea why why the uh, this was necessary, what they suspected. Um, I had to ask him what the results of, of the blood tests were that were taken uh, at, when I was triaged. And he said, oh, everything looks fine on your blood tests. The bl white blood count's uh, just a little bit low, a bit lower than we would expect, but you're on chemo, so, you know, that's, that's fine. Nothing to worry about there. So I went back to the waiting room and I waited and waited and three o'clock came and my friend went and I waited and waited. And one of the problems with waiting, notwithstanding the fact that I was in a packed waiting room with lots of poorly people around me and me with a potentially su suppressed immune system, that there was um, the only thing to eat in the, uh, the A&E was a vending machine that sold chocolate bars and crisps. Well, as luck will ha would have it, weirdly... I can eat crisps, and they don't cause a problem for my uh, esophageal cancer. I don't know why, but there it is. So I had a packet of hula hoops uh, while I was there. Thankfully, there was a water fountain, so I was sipping plenty of water through the day, um, which, uh, which uh, was okay. There was a hot drinks machine, but unfortunately that was out of order. So no hot drinks all day either. And the uh, the waiting room in in A uh, and E is a surprisingly cold place, strangely. And uh, another of the things that I'm uh, asked to do uh, while I'm on chemo is is keep myself, uh, you know, fairly warm at all times. So I've been trying to do that. So here I am. I'm waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And uh, about half past six. I thought, I'll see if... Well, but basically, as it was kind of drifting into the into the afternoon, I thought, there's very little chance that a surgical bed overnight will become available in terms of somebody who clearly wasn't an urgent case getting the first priority. And... Um, and actually, as the day had gone on, waiting in a and &E, I began to feel absolutely fine. The problem that I'd gone, the problem that I was worried about originally, had disappeared, and there was no sign of it, and I was feeling an awful lot better. The, the griping in my stomach was subsiding, 
and uh, and I, you know, I was I, to all intents and purposes, I was well. They're not going to choose me for a surgical bed over and above somebody who has a real emergency. So I went back to the uh, the medical help desk in A and E, uh, and I uh, suggested uh, that. I might go home because I was feeling quite well and uh, and I've been told that me me blood observations were were you know okay you know no worries there and um, the young lady behind the desk the young doctor behind the desk who uh, I have to tell you looked to me to be about twelve years old I must be getting old. Uh, but she was great. She got it instantly. There was no point me being there. So we, we reached a compromise and, and uh, I agreed that uh, I'd go to an emergency consultation this morning. And if I agreed to do that, then I could go home. Uh, so that's what we did. So I came home and uh, I... Um, I had a can of soup and uh, a packet of crisps <laughs> and went to bed. Got up this morning feeling great. However, I went down to the uh, the uh, um, emergency uh, consultation. Um, the consultant that I saw there uh, prodded me and poked about uh, with me and uh, decided that it was probably a flare-up of something called uh, diverticular disease, diverticulitis. Look it up on Google. Google. Um, it's something that I've had uh, quite a number of years ago, and I've kept at bay by having a a, a normally high fibre diet. And uh, obviously, my uh, diet's been a bit uh, fibre light over the last three months, and uh, and that was a result. But what I was really worried worried about and wondered about, and I still am is whether this is likely to be a feature of my chemotherapy uh, through the next cycles and and if it is I can deal with it I can I can you know kind of get on with it uh, and not worry about it really but I still don't know that however I am going to uh, uh, an appointment with my chemo specialist tomorrow afternoon uh, where of course I'll uh, I'll discuss this with him. Um, it's a uh, a, a long range chemo uh, a chemo appointment. He wanted to review me before the second uh, cycle of chemo starts, which is next Tuesday. Fingers crossed. Uh, and um, yeah, uh, so re a really frustrating two days. However, as I say, I felt really well today. Um, my uh, temperature this morning was 37 degrees on the dot and my uh, weight was 92.7 kilograms, which uh, I'm very content about, both those things. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm going to stop rambling on now because I've got on for a long time and... Uh, I will talk to you uh, tomorrow. Thanks for watching and, uh, as I say, talk to you tomorrow. Bye!